Hey everybody, welcome to today's build tutorial. We're going to be learning how to make a basic cottage out of bone as well as a cellar for below it. This build is not very hard and I think you guys might actually learn something in this tutorial. So let's get started. What we're going to start out by doing is taking our main block for the cellar, which is stone. This is going to be made into a 10 by 14 rectangle. We will then start filling in the walls. These walls will each be five blocks high, giving us a 10 by 14 by five stone rectangle. The last thing we're gonna do is fill in the roof only. We wanna leave the actual body of the stone completely hollow. That way we can make our cellar below once we're done with the build. We can then move on to the staircase at the front. We're going to build two stone pillars five blocks high, three blocks from the corners, then we're going to add a four block high and three block high pillar in front of those. This will frame our stairs. We're going to build out one side of the staircase with three more stone blocks and then fill it in. You can use cobblestone for this or whatever you'd like. Finally, we're going to add a flat two by two cobblestone area below the stairs and continue the process to the left as such. It's very basic and honestly, it will look really good in the overall build, and this is a good way to just make a nice pathway and entrance. Finally, we're going to move on to detailing the base. Now, for this build I chose to use stone, cobblestone, andesite, polished andesite, and smooth stone slabs to detail our stone foundation. I wanted to keep the vibe of the base cartoonish, so I went with mainly large square shapes built along its base. I also used these shapes within the stone to add texture to the build. There's no right or wrong way to do this, so however you choose to do it is up to you. I personally think it's a cool style, and it works great with a lot of other things, whether it's a stone wall, or a house, or anything you might use in the future. This style is also really great for creating depth and interest in a normally flat and boring way, by adding lots of textures and also adding lots of depth, because we have things protruding from two or one blocks, as well as we have new textures being added into the actual base. Now, like I said, there's no right way to do this, so if you're following this tutorial, you can kind of choose how you want to make this happen. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, this is just how I did it, but there's plenty of ways to make it still look very interesting. In the end though, simplicity is the best answer a lot of times when it comes to detailing, especially on the small scale. So doing something like this, we try to keep it simple. You can also choose to use clay blocks as well as light gray wool. If you can't have access or don't have much resources as far as stones go. Clay and light gray wool will actually work really great here and provide really complementary colors especially with a stone palette because we keep it in the grayscale. Now we move on to our house. On the top you're going to place one wood log at each corner one block in from the actual rectangle. We then did the same thing with bone. This will make a 10 by 6 bone frame. We then build up the wood logs 4 blocks and we add a sandstone layer above the first layer of bone. We then add 3 more layers of bone blocks above that. For the front door, we're going to place a log right next to the other logs and we're going to make them 3 high, leaving one space in between. Then we're going to add a staircase in between the tops of those logs. This will serve as a frame for our doorway. We're then going to want to add another log above the staircase, and then add our roof, which will be bricks. And we're just going to do it like so, building them one out for an overhang. And then adding a basic wood frame for the roof using staircases, and finally adding our supports using wood fence. We're then going to start making our front roof, which will end up becoming the roof for the entire build. To do this, all we do is make a very simple, very simple overhang as well as shape for the roof, which is this triangular pattern as we see. We then add the staircase, and we make the staircase look really good by making it a little thicker. This gives us a nice overhang feature for the front roof, as well as it makes the roof seem a lot more supported and stable and realistic due to the fact that it has a wood frame on both sides. We then continue the roof towards the back like this, and we just follow the same pattern we were doing in the front. One thing to keep in mind is that 
for most of the times we're making the roof, we may not be using all bricks, so if you would like to skip ahead a little bit and actually see how we do the roof texturing, it might save you some brick blocks, but for now I use it as a placeholder. We're going to delete a lot of those brick blocks later on. The back side, however, will mimic the front side in the same way that we have to make the frame and the one overhang, as well as filling in the bone blocks at the top. Next, we're going to make a small little block just to the side, the left side of the front door, just like this. This will serve as a really good entranceway into the cellar below the build, with a little window and a nice cutout so that we don't actually take up any space with staircases or ladders within our actual house. To detail, we're gonna make two by two windows and add two grass blocks with trap doors in front of them. That way we have a nice little feature and some depth created in the build, as well as we give it some more natural feels by being able to add grass and plants. To cap off the windows, we take some wood slabs and we simply add them as a frame above the windows. We do this on all sides. Next, we make the roof on top of our little tiny box. We simply extend the roof that already exists down a bit and add some framing to both sides. You can do this however you want, but I chose to make it a little bit more asymmetrical by not making the roof overhang on both sides, but instead making the frame overhang on one side. Next, we're going to take granite, and we're also going to take jungle wood planks, and we're going to add them randomly along the roof, just digging into the roof and replacing. This way, it gives the roof a random, almost rustic texture, and makes it look a lot more detailed, as well as a lot more texturized, and I think it creates a lot of interest in the roof, as well as a nice pattern, keeping it with the red tones. Next, we're going to cut a 4x4 section into the roof three away from the back and fill it with smooth sandstone as well as another layer of sandstone and then three layers of bone blocks. This will serve as a skylight. On whichever side you feel you can cut a 2x3 window and add a small frame and then you can cap it off with stone slabs for a roof. Make sure to leave the center open as we want to keep a skylight 2x2 two two on the very top. Next, we're going to make our chimneys. Pick a corner and start creating your chimney. You're going to want to make the chimney a 2x2 two two stone chimney, and you're going to make it about 9 blocks high. You're then going to want to make another chimney right across from it, a little off-center, and you're going to make that about 6 or 7 blocks high. You want the skinnier, smaller chimney to be a little bit shorter than the big chimney. Then we cap it off with a wall, and we cap the other chimney off with anvils. On top of those, we add one layer of smooth stone slabs. If you want, you can add cobwebs above this to mimic the effect of smoke. Finally, we begin adding grass to the top of our roof. You can do this in any random pattern you want, and there's no set way to do it, but it gives the roof a nice overgrown feel, especially when we add bone meal and start adding grass and flowers. Another cool feature you can add that I did not do in this build is adding leaves all over the roof in the same way and actually having them drip off the roof. This, along with the grass, will give the build a really, really nice organic look. It'll make it a lot more natural feeling, and it works really well with the colors we've added to the roof. Now for the interior. We will simply take the inside and we will replace the stone floors with wood floors. Next, we'll cut a little hole right where we made that earlier wood area on the outside and that will serve as our cellar entrance, leaving one block in the corner. We add a trapdoor and some ladders and that's the way we make our cellar below accessible. Think of it like a basement, but the reason we call it a cellar is what I will show you right now. On the outside, we'll go down to the, the little indent in the staircase. We'll then add some stone and some staircases in order to make it feel a little more jagged and stony, and then we'll carve out a small doorway. That doorway will serve as the entrance from the outside to the cellar. Now, I chose to make the cellar not accessible from the outside, which means that the only button for opening the iron door that I will place is actually going to be on the inside. You can choose to place this door however you'd like, and I eventually settled on placing it outside so that it didn't actually allow the user to walk inwards anywhere. Finally, we're going to cap off with two doors in the front, and then we're going to start doing our ceiling. The ceiling is going to consist of sandstone and sandstone staircases, and this will be so that we can make the ceiling feel a little bit more complete and just look a little nicer inside. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this daily tutorial. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more daily tutorials in the future. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to learn or see specifically. And feel free to come check me out on Twitch. Thank you so much, and I hope you had a good time.